Russia's heavy armor have been advancing in Ukraine's capital. While Ukraine's armor may not be as strong as Russia's, the Ukrainians do have a counter against Russian tanks. As a result, Ukraine is concentrating on its anti-tank capabilities. Recently, Syrian rebels have successfully hit a Russian-built T-90 main combat tank with a tow missile developed in the United States. The tank in issue was an older Syrian-operated original model T-90, while the missile seemed to have been an older TOW-2A wire-guided heavy anti-tank missile. The Syrian crew survived the strike with very minimal damage to the T-90 because of its Contact-5 explosive reactive armor. But how would the T-90A do against modern, man-portable, fire-and-forget anti-tank missiles like the Javelin? Furthermore, the current T-90 models are upgraded and replaced with a relic ERA package instead of the Contact-5. The manufacturer claims that the Contact-5 system reduces the effectiveness of tandem charge anti-tank warheads by 60%, reduces the effectiveness of RPGs by 90%, and reduces the effectiveness of kinetic energy penetrators by 20%. The Russians claim that the relic is twice as effective as the Contact-5 with more than 1,000 mm of rolling homogenized armor to protect against tandem charge warheads. Meanwhile, the new T-14 Armada comes with Malekit, a more sophisticated dual-layer reactive armor kit. While the portable FGM-148 Javelin consists of a dumbbell-like launch unit that can launch missiles that are steeply upwards before plunging down on a vehicle's top armor after a target has been located. It is guided by an advanced infrared sensor. The newest man-portable javelin weapons have a range of 2.5 kilometers and a high likelihood of hitting. Moreover, its top attack launch mode will surely take out any tank. This is fire-and-forget missile. It would not be difficult to set up an ambush of three launchers and a good number of missiles to take out the T-90 tanks regardless of how effective their countermeasures are. Anti-tank missiles, notably the Javelin, poses a threat to Russia's T-90 tanks. As a result, the ability and prowess of the crews in the T-90 and the men firing the Javelin will determine the outcome of this battle. The Javelin is a lot easier to operate, so the Javelin may be able to destroy the T-90 tank. However, Russia's military is equipping the T-72 main combat tanks with slat armor umbrellas and heat decoys. To guard against the ground ambushes, slat or cage armor is typically installed to a tank's susceptible site or rear armor. The purpose of slat armor is to damage or misdirect the fuse of chemical energy heat ammunition in anti-tank missiles, causing it to unleash its jet of armor-piercing molten metal. So is the Javelin missile capable of destroying the T-72 fitted with slat armor umbrellas? The Javelin has a two-stage tandem warhead that can penetrate reactive and spaced armor. Furthermore, the molten jet projected by a Javelin's warhead is likely long enough and a tank's top armor thin enough that even if it triggers the main warhead from 0.5 to 1.5 meters away, the cage armor would provide insufficient protection. In fact, when detonated at a short range from the target, such shaped charges may even increase in penetration. To be fair, slats paired with explosive reactive armor bricks might still bend and deflect the primary warhead's blast cone, thereby reducing the severity of a knockout strike. Slatted armor might give enough protection against kamikaze drones, which drop grenades and tiny explosive from small quadcopter drones, but not enough for the Javelin missile. So, what about the new modern Russian T-14 Armada? Will it survive the impact? The Armada's unmanned turret quickly distinguishes it from any other operating tank. The advantage is that the crew compartment is physically separated from the ammunition. 
Furthermore, the tank is outfitted with passive laminated armor, reactive armor and an active protection system. The tank is equipped with Afghanid active protection system to detect, track and intercept incoming shots. The Afghanid radar system automatically spins the turret in the direction of incoming bullets, allowing the active kill system to engage. Rockets directed towards the approaching projectile can be fired from five discharge tubes on each side of the turret. Taken as a whole, the Armada provides far superior crew survivability than any prior Russian or Soviet tank, assuming all of these features function properly. T-14 armor ranges in thickness from 900 to 1,500 mm due to the employment of layered protective system. If we consider that the jet of accumulative projectile of the American ATGM burns through up to 1,000 mm, it turns out that if it hits vulnerable points, the tank's armor will have thorough penetration. Also, if the Afghanid active protection system is malfunctioned, the damage will be significant if hit by the Javelin. The Javelin ATGM missile does not follow a straight path. It first acquires the necessary height before approaching the target at an angle of 40 to 45 degrees. This guarantees complete penetration. Although the Javelin missile is very efficient against all kinds of main battle tanks used by the Russian ground forces, it is believed that Ukraine has purchased far too few to have a significant influence on the battlefield. The Javelin missiles would most likely play a secondary role in the case of a major attack by Russian ground forces. It is a great missile. But the number of Javelins in the Ukrainians is just not a threat to massive numbers of Russia's tanks and armored vehicles. With this, the buzz is signing off for today, but don't forget to hit that notification and subscribe button for more videos from the buzz. Thank you guys for viewing in. Bye bye.